Hey guys, it's Implementary People Frankie, and today I'm going to do the first part of a two-part tutorial that should help you get started in core and making your own world. So this is actually part of Challenge 10, the magazine challenge, and if you check out the full magazine when it's out, then you'll find a lot more cool tips on building worlds and also building houses and stuff. So this is just how to get the terrain you need um, and edit terrain in core for the first part. So usually I get most of my terrains, either I mix and match them together from height maps from other people's world, or I go to terrain party. So terrain party is being glitchy at the moment, so I'll just show you what it is. So literally terrain party is pretty much just a site that has the entire world and its terrains. And theoretically what you can do is just pick an area you want, or you can search for a certain part of the world, so I don't know, just shove in like fell in or something and it'll zoom you in there and um, then you can press down uh, change the size of the map if you want to and press download and it'll give you a file so usually um, this file actually has height maps in it at the moment at the moment it's being glitchy and it's not giving you anything so usually you get Previous ones, nope. Something along the line of like this. So it, um, yeah, here you go. Here's one that here, and you get like these um, height maps out of it. So what we can do is we can load core and just check out those height maps. So these height maps have a certain size. And in core, we need to make them the size we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Photoshop and open these height maps that I want. Let's see if I can find it. It's not one of those things. Right. Oh, that was not the one I wanted. Okay. So this is kind of what you get. And now we're going to go to image, image size. So a small world is 512 by 512. A medium world is 1024. And a large world is 2048. So let's just, for the sake of it loading quicker, do a small world. So I'm going to resize this to 512 by 512 pixels. And save it as tutorial PNG. Right, now I'm going to open... Um, Cool. So I use Supercore most of the time. And if I can find the actual link for it in a second on my very full desktop, we can get started. It used to be around here. Hmm. Wow, I'm blind. Whatever you do, make sure... Oh, here it is run with graphics processor if you're on a laptop make sure you say high performance it usually likes to default itself to the normal graphics which sucks because those suck and it's just gonna kill your computer so just make sure you've got them running on high so all you're gonna do is say new world and you're gonna pick your height map download terrain tutorial and just press OK. Right, as you can see, now I've got a height map and it looks pretty cool. So um, if you're making distant terrain, it's a good idea to have like this. I've never made distant terrain, so I'm just telling you what I do know. And then create a square in the middle, cut that out. That's what you use for core, and the rest, that's what you'll make a height map from. So you need to mesh a, height, um, a distant terrain from that in Blender. So it's usually good in terrain party to make a square a bit bigger, the size you want your distant terrain to be, so to say, and then only use the in inner square for, um, for your core. So what we can do and edit this is we can do things like Control and M channels, and you can see I can make it lighter and darker. If I make it 
later. Let's just show you. You always need to save it as a new file for some really ass reason because it hates it when you oversave. So here I've got pretty good. And then I can go to terrain and say import height map. And just import the next one. You'll see the hills get slightly higher. And again, if I do it the other way around, the hills will get slightly smaller. So I kind of like the original, so let's go back to the original. But yeah, you can also patch together pieces from uh, different height maps, just in Photoshop, just by making layers and putting the images together. So now I've got this. One of the cool features is um, here, the water height. So I can click this, and then I can click a bit further down into the water, and you'll see it'll change my water height. Also, you can do view and turn off the fog because it's usually really annoying to see. So I can make my water kind of go further down if I want to. Maybe I want it kind of here or just a little bit higher so it gets over that rim because I want some more land. So yeah, now I've got a pretty cool height map in here. Okay. So the cool part now is to use a weld machine. So I'll link to weld machine. It's um, linked here on a tutorial that I'll link to by Hydrangea Chainsaw. And when you open it, also make sure to download her texture files and extended overlay macro. Um, you need to run this as admin. I always otherwise won't run. I don't know why it's saying that. Wait, I've already installed it. Install it as admin. Let's see, world machine, world machine. There we go. Right, you'll see this. And a couple of people have actually already made kind of presets. So I'm just going to open and I will try and figure out where the presets are that I have. No. Okay. Terrain examples. You can find terrain examples. And uh, yeah, let's just open random terrain examples. This was not actually what I wanted. Someone actually made, um, here we go, terrain examples that um, I can also share, for example, my Mirth one. So if you open one of these terrain examples, you'll see here there's one called, um, zoom in a bit, file input. If I double click this, then you can see I can load my height map here. The first thing I need to do though is Go to preferences. I think it was preferences. Nope. I'm terrible at this, just saying I'm. Ah. World, um, here, click on this button, and it says which resolution. So our world is 512. So I've got to make sure I'm at 512. Otherwise, it'll spit me out a high map. That's too big. And now I can just load my terrain in here and say, okay. Now you'll see I've got this little window here. I can't really see much. So if I go to here, see I can see my height map. And I can just press on this green button and it will start building, which means I'll be able to see it better. Now here on the side, you've got a lot of um, weird random things like terracing. So you can fiddle around with this. And you can't see very well, but we're obviously changing the way the thing looks. So you can see that it's kind of doing random stuff. So you can press OK on that. One that's really interesting is actually the one that says erosion. So erosion, 
really hard to see most of the time. But you can edit different things around here, sediment carry. And literally what you can do is then if you press green, it will build it up for you again. Is just make your height map look slightly different than what it did before. We'll have to fiddle with all the settings in the world machine. I usually just fiddle with erosion just to give it a bit more depth. And when you're done, just go back to nodes here. And if we go all the way out here, it says height output. So if we double click this, we can call it tutorial three, say set, set where you want to save it. Three. And then disk. Now, if we just want to quickly, because we won't be able to see the difference otherwise, take a snapshot of this, and then we'll import tutorial three. If it's not changing, that's probably because you didn't set the size to the same size as the world you're making. So yeah, you can see kind of it eroded and flattened these middle areas a bit made these hills a bit flatter in parts and stuff like that. Just made it look a bit cooler, I guess. So there we go. We have a pretty good height map. I can upload the math preset um, for World Machine if anyone wants it just to fiddle. And yeah, that's just basics on how to make a really simple height map. Obviously, um, what also works is sculpting random parts, if you've got the patience for that and then using World Machine to kind of make your sculpting look a bit more realistic. But yeah, that's just pretty much the simplest and quickest way to get a height map in Core.